Welcome back. I'm going to make a squash casserole that I watched a video on of uh, Amy's Louisiana Kitchen. I've already talked about that on another video. She, she's she got a great YouTube channel. Anyway, uh, it calls for cornbread, so I'm going to make cornbread this morning. But I'm not going to mix the eggs and the shorting and all that. I'm just going to use some quick and easy buttermilk cornbread. So let me get you down here so you can see it. I'm going to mix this together right quick and be done with it. And I've got a cast iron. I've got a cast iron skillet heating right here beside me. So each one of these packets takes, uh, let's see, get this open here without making a mess. Two thirds of a cup of milk or water. Your choice. I'm using milk. I've used this before. I'm, I'm going to be making another batch here in a couple of weeks. Because I'm going to do, be doing a cornbread dressing, southern cornbread dressing for Thanksgiving early. So I take my two packs. It calls for one, uh, two thirds of a cup of milk. I've got two of those in here. So. I've also sprayed the inside of this container with a butter uh, release, butter spray. This makes it easier to clean up. And heck, the butter flavor is not going to hurt the, this mixture at all. You want to get it fairly smooth. If there's a few clumps, that won't matter but try to get it pretty smooth, like a, like a thin cake batter. And yes, I'm using an old, old spoon. This spoon I made in high school in my woodshop class. We got to make toolboxes and uh, most of this was handmade. I mean, literally I saw the, the frame out and I, and I uh, took a rasp and started cutting and mixing and taking parts of it off and just like any good recipe it turned out pretty good it's lasted me through the years and I was in high school that was in 1967 so all right I think that's good enough let me get you over here to my pan here my skillet This skillet's hot. I've had it on a burner. That's the same way I would cook uh, any kind of cornbread. It, you'll see that it's got uh, bacon drippings and uh, a little bit of butter in it, so that's not going to hurt a thing. You can kind of hear it sizzling. Now, if I'm cooking regular cornbread, I will take and get that thing red hot. Get a big heavy crust on it, but. I don't actually need that heavy crust on this. I just need cornbread for the dressing recipe, the squash dressing. So. When I was going through my old tools, that's where this old knife came out. This old knife came out of. I found these two knives that I made. When I was in seventh or eighth grade, my first attempt at making knives, I don't know if there you can see them now. The little, they were my hunting knives and skinning knives. And I'm gonna clean those boys up. They sharpen up really well. They were made out of old saw blades. So anyway, let me uh, get this hot skillet in my oven. It's set on 400 and uh, always a fun deal it's still preheating it needs a, just a minute more just wrapping this towel up so I can get a hold of it good all right there he goes boys and girls don't want to spill that it doesn't take long to cook. Let's see. I think the recipe says that 
it will cook in about 15 to 20 minutes. That's for a single recipe. So uh, let's see how it cooks. I, I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. I think that is not long enough, but it'll give me an idea to check it at that point. If I need to add some time to it, I will. Uh, 15 minutes. Timer's on and counting down. And we'll just see you back here in a little bit when this uh, cornbread is done. Cornbread for my squash casserole. All right, back with you. Let's check this cornbread. I'm, I, I, I can smell it, so I think it's ready. Let me put the camera down here. Sorry. I see him getting out of the oven, maybe. Hey, Mr. Big Man coming in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's not all going in the... I can't reach it. I use my handy-dandy multitasking kitchen tools to turn this around so I can get to it. That's the best tool I ever invented. Oh, yeah. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah. If that ain't a pretty sight. All right, I know it's done without checking it, but if you insert a knife or anything in here and it comes out clean, it's done. Yeah, she's done. Another, another deal for my tool, checking my cakes and cornbread. My goodness, that smells good. This is not all going into the squash casserole because I'm going to have to have a piece of this with some butter. Uh, anyway, just thought I'd bring you back for this. with you the uh, cornbread is done now I'm gonna cut up some squash saute it or actually I'm just gonna boil it with a little salt and pepper and uh, let uh, let it cool down and I uh, put it in the fridge today and I'm gonna make the dressing tomorrow the squash dressing so we'll see you on tomorrow's video just got through washing these yellow crookneck squash off. They're really fresh, even with the stems on. They're about a medium size, not too large. And they're gonna go into a pot of boiling water, salted water, so I can get them soft to put in my squash dressing. I'll bring you back. All right, getting ready to slice these up. I just got through washing them, drying them off a little bit. There's no bruises, no bad spots on these, so they're kind of ready to go. Ready for the chopping block. Let's see here. Take the ends, discard of those in the trash. Just slice these in about a quarter inch round. When you get near the, the smaller end here, you can actually slice them a little larger because they're going to cook. Like, I'll get this one off my hand here. I'm just going to put this little one in two pieces. And the rest go into the pot. I'll bring you back when I get finished with this. All right, just about got them all chopped. The main thing is, when you're gonna do this, make sure that the squash don't have any bruises on them, that they're pretty fresh, and uh, cut the ends and, and cut them in 
about quarter inch thick slices. I'm going to put these, all of these into a pan, a heavy stock pot. This is my mother-in-law's. Margie, she's gone now, but this is what she cooked in. I love this old pot. I have hers and my mom's. So I'm going to turn this up on high because we want to boil this. I'm going to add some salt, salt to it. Some big flake sea salt. Elephant salt. No butter or anything like that. Just enough to coat it. I can't remember actually how many cups of this. Once it's cooked, it's going to be mashed down, and it, the recipe calls for a certain number of cups. I think maybe two and a half cups. I can't remember. But if there's any left over, that's no problem. I'm going to saute it in that in that black skillet with some onions. That'll be our dinner. I'm not going to put this recipe together until tomorrow. So. All right, water as follows. Probably uh, four cups is going to cover this. This is two cups of container. Maybe eh, two and a half. What's that? Three cups. Just for good measure. And it's going to come to a boil. And I'm going to let it rock and roll. Bring you back when it's all cooked and ready. Let's see that down here. Bring you back when it's ready, and I'll uh, smash some of this up and uh, go from there. All right, back with you again. I believe my squash is ready. I need two and a half cups of mashed, so I'm probably going to do about three cups total. You can see it's falling apart, some of it is. If there's anything left, which there will be a little bit left, I will saute this up in a skillet this afternoon with a little bit of butter and have some cornbread on the side. And let me get this. Turned off because it's cooked. All right. And mash this and make sure I've got enough of it. Let's see. I thought I noticed a stem in here a while ago. I did. My multi tool got it out. <laughs> yeah, that's hot. Hot potato. All right. And just mash this down. I'm gonna put it in my second helping hand here. Now pour this back in my measuring cup and make sure that I don't want it to be creamed or anything. I want some of the squash to look like squash. Let's see. Or not. Oh, yeah. That's going to be okay. That's going to be okay. get some of the squash out and leave the water out of it. It wouldn't hurt anything, but I don't want my dressing to be watery. I like 
any kind of dressing I make, I want it to be on the dryer side. I want to have moisture in it, but I want it on the dryer side. There you are, you are boys and girls. I'm going to let this cool down overnight. Mix it with my, bring it out in the morning, let it get room temperature, and mix it with my cornbread. And start my dressing recipe, squash dressing recipe tomorrow. See you later. Well, let's get this party started. This morning, we're going to do a squash dressing, southern squash dressing. Um, but first things first. Yeah, y'all know how this game goes. Got to have my coffee. It's just I mean, just then, just finished perking, so. Yeah, I don't do this because it's fancy looking, putting it up really high. I do it because it aerates my coffee. Oh, I felt something pop. What that was. Anyway. Get my stir stick here. Yeah, this is a big stir stick. <clears throat> Let me get this out of the way so you can kind of see what's going on. Put this over here on this small burner. It doesn't really matter. I'll move it to the large burner. But first, a sip of mud. Yeah. Turn this on. I'll turn that burner on the high right now. And I'll post a, a picture of the recipe. I got this recipe by watching a YouTube channel I follow. Amy's Louisiana Kitchen. <clears throat> I love her channel. I love her f thoughts on her food and her family and her faith. We all need that in life. And she, she and her husband, I think his name is John, they do a very good job. They're in uh, northern Louisiana. So I'm going to put one stick of butter in this pot here. So I just want to melt it. Other burners on over here. Let's see here. Back one needs to go on low because that's where the coffee's gonna go. Let's stay warm for the wife. And uh, the front one. It'll just go on high. This is gonna cook in the oven anyway. As you can see, I'm not awake good. It's early. It's early Wednesday morning. So anyway, once it's melted and it's it's on its way to being melted, I'm gonna add my vegetables. And like her, I didn't want to sit and chop all these vegetables up, so she got these uh, seasoned blend vegetables. I bought Wally World. I'm not sure the brand she used. It's got onions, celery, red peppers, green peppers, parsley flakes. That's everything you need for a party. I'm, I'm actually going to make some southern cornbread dressing here pretty soon and I've got a pack of these to make it and I'm going to put a video up of uh, making that before Thanksgiving that way there's always a bunch of people on my uh, Facebook and, and I have a Facebook page the same name the Country Boy Can Cook Facebook if you want to join it lots of recipes lots of videos Anyway, go over there and watch it. 
but I always have somebody, well, how do you make dressing? Even my daughter called me up one year and said, Dad, I don't know how to make Granny's dressing, which is a dressing I make. Granny was my mother. And uh, so I'm just going to stir this around and let it melt down. I have, uh, of course, you can have dressing with that cornbread. So I've got cornbread here. And uh, this is a squash dressing, dressing. And I cook and mash the cost of cooked mash squash, two cups. So I did that yesterday. I'm going to uh, put that in the microwave here in just a minute, along with the cornbread. I don't want it to be cold when I mix this stuff together. And I've got to go get a couple of eggs out of the fridge to go with this. So I'll bring you back here in just a few minutes. All right, I'm back with you. The vegetables I put in in that butter, they're just soft and no color on them. Uh, it's funny, we had a discussion a couple of years back about making dressing on my Facebook page. And... Um, that a country boy can cook page and uh, my mother always cooked her vegetables and onions and celery and whatever she was putting in there and that was pretty much it she didn't add a lot of crazy stuff <clears throat> so I tried it one year with and she would cook hers down in butter like this I tried it one year and uh, without cooking the vegetables because I'm thinking okay well, it's going to be in a hot oven for about an hour at 350 degrees 375 isn't that going to cook the vegetables so I did and actually it was really good it, uh, they had not uh, they didn't turn to mush or anything they still had a little not crunch but you could tell what they were they were vegetables and so but anyway I'm following Amy's recipe here and uh just got the squash out. That's a generous two cups. I believe that's probably what she did. You know, every every cook uh, changes the recipe a little bit. And she used a Mexican style uh, vegetables. I guess they had Mexican flavor in them. I, I'm not sure exactly. I've never used any of that. Uh, no, I, I'm wrong. Kate, let me let me back that up. She used Mexican style cornbread. Uh, just regular vegetables. I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want her to be mad at me. Because I've contacted her. Told, I've already told her that I'm going to make her recipe. So, in goes the squash. That's two cups. And it was easy. I'll put a video up of me cooking it. <clears throat> it, it you just cut them in quarter inch slices. Salt, salted water. And uh, turn it on high. Takes about eight minutes until it's fork tender. I turned, poured mine into a colander and mashed it in the colander. That way, it got most of the uh, um, most of the uh, water out. So I'm gonna mix these together. I usually I don't use salted butter, so I very seldom ever salt anything. I'm not going to beat it around too much. But I'm going to salt this and put a little pepper in it today. So I'm afraid if I don't, it will uh, it will be a little bland. It's funny, I cooked squash yesterday a pretty good bit. And I had some left over. And we had it for dinner last night. And it was just, and just a pinch of salt. Um, they were just just left into, into rounds, cooked rounds, soft and tender. I had to drain the water off of them and put them in a bowl and put them in the fridge and kept them, uh, kept them cold until our dinner last night. And then uh, we uh, had those with just a pat of butter on the top, a little salt and pepper. Oh my goodness. If you're not a squash fan, you don't know what you're missing. I, I know, I got, and I hate people say, well, you need to try this. Well, uh, folks, you need to try squash. Uh, I like it fried, boiled, sauteed, you, you name it. And it's good for you. So, so I've got my cornbread here. 
I cooked it yesterday. <clears throat> And, and this is made from a, a mix, a cornbread mix that you can buy. The one I get, I uh, can't remember the brand of it, but it's, uh, you just add water and milk. I put buttermilk in it. I like to use buttermilk more for my recipes, coffee milk. Even my chocolate cakes that I bake, uh, even all my cakes I bake, they get baked with buttermilk. So I've heated this up because it had been in the fridge since yesterday. I'm just going to kind of crumble it up. I don't, not, I don't want it too terrible broke up, but it's going to break up a little bit when I'm stirring it around. And it's all I can do not to take a little piece of this and put it in my butter I've got here, but I think I need it all for my recipe. Anyway, she, she did one one pouch, uh, uh, I don't know what they call that, ready-made uh, cornbread mix. You just add your items to it and it and bake it but I knew I wanted some for dinner last night which I we had so I, I did two batches uh, so this morning this recipe gets half of it and um, the cornbread was really good it was a complete cornbread mix but I can't remember what brand it was huh? it, it wasn't the most important thing on my mind last night my mind was eating uh, eating dinner and my dinner was um, excuse me while I get a drink here my dinner was uh, I had fried cabbage yesterday with a little bit of bacon in it a little bit of onion oh man that, that's a I had a country boy meal last night I had cooked some steaks from the other night we had one steak left we split it so we just had a small portion of steak each and uh, let's see what else I've got up here. Let's see it. Didn't know if I had anything left up there or not. So what she did is stirred this around. She added cream of chicken soup. This is what I'm going to do. I don't want to vary too far from her recipe. I don't want to get in trouble. See, I still have trouble lifting. My, my hands are still not strong, but once my multi-tool helps, as you can see, my multi-tool saves the day again. <laughs> I use this tool. I actually use this tool for everything in the world. So, I want to make sure I get all this goodies out of here. So, so cream of chicken. And this is really an easy recipe. And whether you want it, you can make a little bit of, uh, yeah, on the day before, uh, you can make it all in one day. I believe she said it was good frozen before cooked. I, I, I believe that's what she said. Um. And uh, I know that I've made dressing before when we used to have large crowds around. And at one point in my life, uh, I had a had a group called, uh, and I never thought about videoing it. And of course, there were some things I couldn't video on it. Um, I had cookies for cops. I've always had some buddies that were on the local police department. Oh, well, police departments across Texas. And uh, so, Cookies for Cops was an organization. And I got my friends that were on my Facebook page that love to cook and they were local. And matter of fact, some of them weren't even local that donated. So, let me, let me get this and we'll get back to Cookies for Cops. I'm going to stir this around. And uh, anyway, we would we would uh, set up a date and a time, and we would all get together and go up there and take food. Uh, 
Some of our members weren't even locally. They were down in Central Texas. <clears throat> they would ship it to me and I would take it. And we would take everything. We even took, uh, when I worked for the plastic surgeon, they no donated, uh, I think, 15 boxes full of rollerball fountain pens to write, write tickets. No, to write the reports with. Because they love rollerball in the, the city of Louisville at that time. I don't know what they do anymore. They did not furnish the policemen with rollerball pens. That, you know, that was a costly thing. So, uh, I'm just stirring this around to get it all mixed up. And, uh, so we gave pens, we would take food, and of course we took cookies. But one Thanksgiving, I cooked Thanksgiving Day uh, before I had cooked, and my daughter came and helped, and uh, we cooked Thanksgiving dinner. We had a big ham, uh, we had chicken and we had chicken, and then we had uh, cornbread, southern cornbread dressing. Made it a couple of different ways, one of them really soft and moist. That's what my dad always liked. He wanted it really soft. I mean, you could just, it looked, didn't even really look cooked, but it was. My mother made sure of that. Anyway, so Cookies for Cops was a great organization. We fed a lot of police departments. And we would do gift baskets. We would do bags of uh, goodies, goodie bags. And uh, just find a policeman sitting on the parking lot somewhere and uh, donate food to them. And uh, I'll try to get some pictures and put that up, just a couple of them, so you'll see what I'm talking about. But we would pull up to the police, say, hey, have you got a minute? You know, they kind of look at you like, uh, okay, what's going on? And uh, just tell them what we were doing. We, we were just delivering smiles. And they were always, they were just, they would love it. So Anyway, I went to the hen house this morning and got a couple of fresh eggs. Yeah, y'all didn't know I had a hen house? Yeah, it's called my refrigerator. All right. And I'm going to do this pretty quick. There's two eggs. No shells. The reason I'm going to do it quick is because I don't... that This dressing is still a little bit warm. I don't want it to be scrambled eggs in there. I just want it to mix in. And... All right, yeah. This looking good. Looking good like she should. It's funny, we went to, uh, I don't can't remember if it was New Year's or when we were driving around. My wife and I were one time. Oh, it was New Year or it was Christmas time because I had a Santa cap on. And uh, that looks pretty good right there. So we drove up to a, a gas station convenience store called uh, Quick Trip. And there was a little PD guy out there. He was handcuffing a dude, putting him in his car. <laughs> I don't know what the, I, can't, I didn't even ask him what the, what was going on. It didn't matter. But um, I rolled down the window and said, hey, if you got just a second, I know you're, I see your business. He said, yeah, no problem. What do you need? And uh, I said, we just want to put a smile on your face and told him who we are. And he said, oh yeah, he had, he had had some of our food at the station when we take it up there, so. So let's see, make sure my burner's not hot here. I'm gonna grease this pan here. This is the one a baking dish. I'm gonna. It's probably got enough butter. I mean, this is just almost a standard southern dressing recipe uh, that I've made lots of times in my life. So, the only addition is the uh, squash. So, let me get this in here because I've got the oven on and it's it's cranking and this is always my struggle here. I get on the struggle bus doing this. This is my arms are. They're just not as strong as they used to be. My wrists are still weak. And this is all coming from a guy that uh, 
at one point in my life, not too many years ago, I was working on a Volkswagen. I was making a dune buggy. And I, I was taking the top off of the off of the frame of a, an old Volkswagen. I was by myself, man, as I make a mess here. But I want everything out. Everybody gets in the party here. There you go. Boy, it smells wonderful. I, I want you to know, boys and girls, that smells really good. Uh, anyway, I got to unbolting the body, which, man, not, not too many bolts. It took about an hour. And I was going to call a buddy of mine to come and help me lift the body off. He wasn't available. I'm not going to smooth this totally out. I, I like a few ridges. I, I think she's talked about the same thing. I'm going to see some brown spots when it's baked. Anyway, I got up under that Volkswagen and stood up and lifted it on my shoulders. The, just the body was nothing, you know, just the outside body part and lifted it off that Volkswagen. Even when I was in high school, I could literally pick up the front of a Volkswagen car, motor and everything, of course the motors in the rear, and pick it up and slide it over. I've always been super strong. It's one of my things I've had to overcome uh, during this uh, struggles here I've had. Anyway, let me get this in the oven. And uh, the oven is preheated at 350. This is always fun since I sit in a chair and do up most of my cooking. I always worry about the, this hot stove closing on my arms when I'm in here. But so far, so good. Get my old apron out. Don't want to bake it. Uh, anyway, I believe she said bake, bake that for about... Uh, I think she said 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I'm gonna turn it on 35 and check it. Let me set a timer. Oh, there it is. It's actually set on 30, 36 minutes. So anyway, that's one of my one of my struggles, is a mental struggle. I mean, there's nothing I could do to, for it. Just you know, keep on every day and working my hands and arms and you know. Uh, at one time, they, they had they had fitted me for a wheelchair, and it's here. The, the wheelchair, I've never used it. It's new. It's in my, it's in a closet, and uh, they said, well, we're going to fit you for, for a wheelchair, and I knew at that point they thought I would be in a wheelchair the rest of my life, and uh, I just said, you know what? This ain't, this ain't for the old dude. I mean, if I have to, I have to, but I had to reach down deep. I mean, when you got to reach down deep, you got to really reach down deep, and I did, and uh, started walking. Uh, when they fitted me for the wheelchair that morning, I had stepped, tried to step on one step. They had some, in my rehab, they had steps that you could walk all the way up, about eight or nine flights, rails on the side, you know, getting you ready to go home and, and walk, and there was lots of patients, and I've told this story before, but lots of patients, and in there, uh, some were on uh, in wheelchairs, some were paralyzed, some amputees, some people just you know had knee replacements and they were in for therapy. So that morning early, they tr uh, we had had exercise and you know our group exercise and uh, all of my group was in wheelchairs and. You know, we listened to some old rock music and pitched the ball from each one or the other. You know, just getting your movement of your hands. Uh, you know, any no crazy stuff. And uh, so after we got through it there, they said, let's go see if you can go up these stairs. I said, okay. I knew I could barely lift my leg. But, but anyway, I got over there and I stood up. I, I was just getting so I could stand up. And they would make sure that I wasn't going to fall. And I grabbed a hold of both sides of the rail. Um, I couldn't even get one fit up there. Man, it was, it was so disappointing. And then about 30 minutes later, they, they took me down to this guy, and he was in a wheelchair, and he fitted me for a wheelchair. And he was saying that my insurance was going to pay for a power assist wheelchair and, and all this. And So as I wheeled that 
out of there. After, and he said it, it wouldn't be at my home until after Thanksgiving. That's when I was going to get home. So as I wheeled out of there in my wheelchair, my barred wheelchair, uh, I looked at those steps and my therapist was walking by and I said, hey, uh, it's about 11 o'clock. I was going back for lunch. I said, in the morning, can I try those steps again? He said, yeah, do you think you can do it? I said, well, I know I couldn't step up one. I couldn't even step up the one this morning, but it was later in the morning. We'd already had exercise. Come get me the first thing in the morning for breakfast or anything, if you can, if you got time. Let me try those one more time while, while I'm fresh. I, I mean, I'm a heart I'm in heart failure. At, right now, I'm in heart failure. Um, I don't think about it. I don't try to let it bother me, but I do give out in the afternoons. So the next morning, bright and early, it was like 7 o'clock. They were in there. There was two of them came to get me. They pushed me down because it's a long ways down. They And they usually push me instead of me trying to get uh, back and forth in the wheelchair by myself. They said, okay, here it is. And so I had my phone on me. and I, uh, I had lost at that time, I had lost about 125 pounds in, in, in about three weeks. I, I was dropping weight like you would not believe. A lot of it fluid so they wheeled me up there and I gave my phone to one the, the female therapist <laughs> and the guy named Mucky he was behind me he wasn't very big and I, I told him I said well I'm gonna try this I hope I don't fall because if I fall I'm gonna squish it he said no you're good I got you I know how to do this and I said all right so I mean I had to reach down deep just like the first time I ever rode a bull I was in the fifth grade I, I was my dad and uncles bet me what I wouldn't get on this bull at this rodeo. He was a junior bull. He was about 1,500 pounds. Um, you know, about about a one-year-old bull. Uh, black and white spotted bramer. Big hunt. So as I crawled over on him, got the rigging on him, crawled over on him, and I borrowed the rigging, and I borrowed a set of spurs, even though I was riding horses on our ranch at that time, breaking wild mustangs with my dad. A bull's totally different. And, uh, it took all the guts in the world that, to me to climb down on that bull and, and shake my head and say, go to open that gate. Because I didn't know what was going to happen except fear has a way of making you do things. And what did I do? I held on for dear life and I heard that eight second buzzer go off. And about nine seconds, I'm thinking, okay, now what do I do? I've stayed on him the whole time. He's bucked around the arena in the middle of the arena and all to the left, to the right. I said, well, there's not a choice. I mean, just let go. And I let go at the perfect time, and he bucked, and I went up and landed straight on my feet. I looked like a rodeo star. I, I didn't throw my arms in the air like Rocky, like, yeah, I got it. I got it like the, the riders do now. I mean, you know, wasn't no fanfare. I, I just walked back to the chute, and I won that bull uh, ride that night. With the, with the ride I, I made, I, I won the, uh, the event. Uh, junior rodeo I won that and then that started me on my love affair for riding bulls so when I went up those stairs that morning that's that's a long story I'm sorry but we got time I'm baking this dressing uh, when I went up those stairs and, and took that first step it was like okay you got to do this it's the same gut feeling you got to reach down deep and do it and she got it on video and not boys and girls I didn't go up one stairs I went all the way to the top of the stairs which was eight Eight, eight rungs of the stairs. I, I, I felt like ringing the bell once I got to the top and turned around and came back down. And they were saying, oh my God, this is amazing, this is amazing. I said, I wouldn't hold it back on you. I just wasn't exerting everything I had. And anyway, so sometimes we're faced with life crisis every day and you got to dig down deep just to, to get through. Uh, so if you see me struggling, trying to lift, like, this is a years ago I could just lift this no problem but old cast iron skilled of my grandmother's uh, and now it's a problem my, my wrists are just weak I, I don't know what it is I don't know what caused them to work well I know my heart went went haywire but anyway they get a little stronger every day so if you see me struggle you'll understand why I'm, I know this is a long roundabout story about a bacon squash dressing but uh, sometimes you just got to pull down deep and do what you got to do so i'll bring you back here in about 27 minutes i guess my story wasn't as long as i thought anyway bring you back in just a little bit when this is done all right 
let's check and see what this looks like. It's, we've got about three and a half minutes left. Don't want to bake my hot pad. Get the world's greatest tool, put it to use. Oh, it's looking really good. It's bubbling around the edges. I told you this tool comes in handy. It's still got some work. It can probably about 10 more minutes. Like I said, I didn't set it on the whole time. I think she did her for like 50 minutes or so. Anyway, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Back with you. I would just, I've got about two more minutes left. I checked it while I go, checked that temperature. It was at 210, which is, it's cooked, but it was still a little jiggly. I like my dressing. I like it a little on the firmer side. My dad would love it like this. Anyway, I'm just sitting here and I'm finishing my dishes up and I had uh, YouTube on the best of cream. I love that band, uh, all their songs. When I was growing up and uh, going to college, well, I graduated from Lake Dallas High School in 71. So my senior year, I went to North Texas and took an extra class uh, to get some classes away for my college. And uh, so I went to North Texas in 71. And then after I graduated, I went there and then went to a junior college. Uh, North Texas was a blast. I played in a rock band, so, you know, I was in my element up there. All the hippies running around, and we had the best hamburger place across from campus. I don't can't remember. I hope somebody from Denton area watches this, and they can tell me. Maybe it was Zeke's or something like that. Man, great malts and hamburgers. Oh, it's wherever, it was the happening place where everybody hung out. All the great music was being, you know, on their loudspeakers. And on the weekends and weeknights, the parties and the dorms and the houses around there, well, let's just say they're memorable. So I've got 43 seconds left. And the story I was going to tell you about me riding the bull and me trying to get my arms stronger, the bottom line of that, never give up. I mean, you just can't because you only have one way to go at that point. So just don't give up and... Let's get this countdown going. It's at 20 seconds now, so I, th I think it's going to be, it, it's, I begin to smell it about five minutes ago. That's always my, when I start smelling the food I'm baking, like yesterday I, I baked the cornbread and I could start to smell it. I knew it was ready. And just a few minutes later, it was coming out. I'm smelling this dressing and there goes the beeper, so. Anyway, if you, if you like old rock music like I do, good. Go to YouTube, and uh, I guess what I, it's the only one I listen to. It's easy, and I just hit the best of cream. There's lots of people that put the best of cream albums up there, and uh, let's see if I can turn this around. Anyway, enjoy your enjoy listening. It's what life is about. Let's see if I can scoot this back a little bit. Butcher knife out of the way. You know what this Jethro spoon is for? Yeah, I'm gonna taste this. So let's get it up here. The world's greatest handy dandy tool. I, I need to go to Shark Tank and, and get a sell it for a, a one percent of my sales, a million dollar investment. Right. They probably got a tool out there that's already invented that does this. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen one. So let's see if it needs a little bit more cooking. It sure is brown. It feels, it's set on top. So yeah, it's ready. All right. Wish me luck, boys and girls. I should have grabbed another hot pad this morning. I didn't. I'm like a real person every, in this morning, I, before I even got in here in the kitchen and hit, I'd turn my coffee on. Uh, I was uh, doing laundry. Oh yeah, goodness, that smells so good. Yeah, I tell you. 
It looks perfect. Get my cutting board out of the way. Get you up here so you can see a good look at this baby. Oh, goodness. It's, it's set really good. My multi tool. It's not jiggly. I mean, it, it's not soft. It's not rock hard dried out dressing. It, it's somewhere in between. I think this is going to be so good. And I'm going to find out here in just a few minutes. Let me move the camera. I'll add something else to my old man babbling this morning. I told you when I was in therapy how much weight I'd lost. Next, let's see, uh, I've got 14 days will be the anniversary of when I had my heart event. When I went to the hospital, I weighed 480 pounds. Yeah, a big boy. Um, I weigh a, just a tad like 39, 309 right now. So I've lost a ton of weight. Uh, I've lost my wife off my back because she doesn't weigh as much as I've lost. So anyway... Just keep on trying. You'll get there. And, and the great part about it, I go to my closet. My wife, when she gets in this morning, she said, you got a new T-shirt on or new shorts on? I said, yeah. I went to my closet and went shopping, getting clothes I hadn't worn in years. So let me try this for you. It's like lava right now. spill any of this goodness as you can see yeah it's nice and warm I mean, the smell is is wonderful and you, know, you should always listen to your gut and my gut says do not take a bite of this right now because it is lava and it's gonna burn your lips and tongue and your throat so I'm gonna listen to it I'm gonna let it cool down just a second it's good and brown on the side, so everything is set. So I'll bring you back here in just a minute, and I'll do the taste test and see what it tastes like. It's the first time I've ever made this. I've made dressing lots of times, southern dressing, cornbread dressing, but first time with squash. Should be good. Oh, and I have a video. I used squash and cornbread. made uh, cornbread squash one day. It was really good, too. If you want to see it, check it out. Be right back. All right, let's see how I checked the temperature of, of the uh, dressing. It's a, it was at 210 earlier, but it, it's down to 200, so it's setting up really good. My probe is too long to go in here to check it, but I think it's cooled down enough. Hold on just a second. And I always don't eat like a caveman with my hand like this, but I can't hold. I don't have the wrist movement to, to uh, eat properly. So I look like I'm shoveling in. Well, that's the only way I can get it in my mouth. So Oh, Lord. Mm. I know what I'm having for breakfast this morning. Goodness, this is so good. Thank you, Amy, from Amy's Louisiana Kitchen for posting this. I hope I've done your recipe justice. I know I did not use Mexican cornbread mix, but it's really good. So, boys and girls, I hope y'all try this recipe. Thanks for being here, having my breakfast with me. And uh, let me put this down. Please share, comment, and like my videos. And I will catch you on the next ride around, hopefully soon. You never know what I'm doing baking or cooking. I believe the next step is going to be chicken livers fried. We'll see. Thanks to Amy's Louisiana Kitchen for your post. This recipe rocks. Thank you so much for being part of the world of the old dude. Enjoy the recipe. We'll talk to y'all soon.